Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. So I wanted to make a quick video talking about the Todoist keyboard improvements. I'm super happy that we finally are able to select items using the arrow keys and Vim bindings, even though I have been using the Todoist shortcuts extension, which allowed me to do that for the last couple of years. It's one of the main reasons why I install Kiwi as a browser on my tablet so that I can run Todoist in there in a browser and install this extension, allowing me to use my keyboard to control my tasks. So am I happy with this? Yes and no. I like the way it's set up, but it's not as efficient as the extension. So I will be going back to it and I want to dive into where those differences are and what I do like about it. Now, let me give you a quick demo on what the keyboard extension does. And that is you can use the arrow keys to select an item, which is awesome because that means that you no longer need the mouse. And there's a few simple keyboard commands like V, which moves something to a project where you can pick like which project you want to send it to, press enter and it gets moved. You can also use T, which stands for time. And that means that you can pick like, hey, I don't want to do this today, but I want to do it tomorrow, for example, and then move it towards another day, which is all amazing and allows you to quickly select things. The final one that I use a lot, of course, is pressing the E button, which means that you will mark it as done and then it gets moved from your view. It is super welcome. It was something that I've been missing since the beginning of Todoist. And even though I found a way around it, it's just nice that even if I'm somewhere and I log into an anonymous browser, I don't have the extension loaded, I can still quickly use these very basic function. Another thing that I really liked is their Ctrl K menu, which shows all the things and makes it very easy to discover buttons. So if you ever going to use this, Ctrl K is your friend to find out what buttons you can use and where to move things. I also hope that they improve it with a few of the things that I will show you now about the Todoist shortcuts extension. Now, let me quickly switch on the extension. So I'm going to my extension, switching it on, and I'm reloading Todoist. And you'll see some immediate changes. For example, the extension only has a line instead of selecting the whole block. And there's a few functions that I really like. One is the G key, which means that I can move towards like my inbox by doing G I or going back to where I was by going to D E, in this case, going towards my demo project. It's very smart, it allows me to quickly move through things. Uh, things that you've seen, like the V still works, except the box pops up on a different location, but you can still just type in a project name and it will filter it out and you can select it to move things towards sad project. So far, so good. Now, one of the things that I absolutely love about this extension is the fact that you can use double keys to move things. So say, for example, I want to do a subtask today. I can press the T and C to say like, hey, I want to do it today. If I'm saying like, I don't got time to do this today, I can press T twice to go to tomorrow and I can do T, W to move it towards next week. I'll give you a demo on that one as well. So that allows me to very quickly move my tasks in my schedule and is one of the main reasons why I'm keeping the extension because I, I'm so used to using these keyboard commands when I'm going over my task list that not having these features would just drive me insane. Uh, another thing that I really like about the extension is that if you press enter, it will edit it in place. Now, if you use the Todoist one, and I'll quickly show you that, it will pop up and that just takes a bit more time. So let me reload it. So I select this one, I press enter and it opens it in a sub screen. And of course it's nice that you can see the subtasks, but because the subtasks were already visible in the main view, it's not as handy as you would think. Now the problem with an extension is of course, it only works in a browser and that's not such a big issue in my case. I always use things in the browser and I just save them as a desktop shortcut, meaning that all the Windows Chrome gets removed around it from the browser. And that makes it work like a native app to me, except now I have proper keyboard extensions. I also get this working on my Android tablet, but I use the Kiwi browser for that, which is a Chrome browser clone that allows me to inload the Chrome extensions, which gives me the options there as well. Now, I'm still happy with the Todoist keyboard updates because I know that they will add those things towards the desktop app, meaning I could use keyboard extensions there 
if I wanted to, it wouldn't be as perfect, but it's much better than having nothing. This will also help out a lot of people that, well, don't want to install extensions or just want to have like a tad bit more keyboard control. In this case, you're in luck. This works absolutely fine. And finally, uh, and this is for me like at one point, I tried it on my tablet and unfortunately the Android app doesn't have these keyboard shortcuts yet. They might get added in the future, but on this point in time, I tried it with the keyboard and I can't use any of these commands. And this is of course not so strange because the Android app is mostly used on phones and most phones don't have hardware keyboards. So keyboard shortcuts are probably not a priority. This was a short video. I just wanted to talk about keyboard shortcuts because I love keyboard shortcuts. Definitely a to-do list that I'm using all the time. So see you in the next one. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.